the excitement, Morris. The Commissioner's been asking for you for hours. It's the Herncastle Moonstone. Moonstone? Oh, yes, that famous yellow diamond that's been getting so much publicity lately. That's it. You'd better go straight in. Wasn't this diamond supposed to have come from India, sir? Stolen from a sacred idol or something? Yes. I'm not particularly superstitious, but this wretched thing's worth a fortune. And now someone's died and left it to old Vera and his daughter. The papers are full of the story. And by this time, every thief in England knows that Franklin Blake is taking it to her at Verinda Manor, 40 miles from nowhere in the wilds of Yorkshire. It's certainly asking for trouble and they'll probably get it. I know Sir John Verinda very well. Dreamy old scientist. <laughs> so busy laboring for humanity's sake that he's let his affairs go to rack and ruin. In fact, he's practically broke. Too busy, I suppose, even to take the ordinary precautions about the moonstone. Exactly. And that's what worries me. Of course, it isn't the business of Scotland Yard to go about warning people who are foolish enough to make themselves targets for all the thieves in the country. But Sir John's different. He's an old friend of mine. It's a personal matter. I understand, sir. But surely Franklin Blake will take every precaution. He's a very clever young lawyer, sir. Yes, yes, Scott, I know. But I don't want him to take any chances. Well, that's why I've sent for you. Thank you, sir. Now, you get in your car quietly. Drive up there and have a talk with Blake and Miss Ferringer. Now, strictly unofficially, of course. I understand. You tell them some of our experiences with these famous jewels that have a way of leaving nothing but disaster in their path. Very good, sir. Is that all, sir? That's all. Good night, Captain. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. They're in the manner of all places. Sir John Verinder, please. Mr. Kyle Van Lucker from London. Yes. Yes, I know. Why, Rosanna, what are you doing here? Please. Please, Van Lucker. Don't tell Sir John. The housekeeper. Yes, Sir John is in. Who shall I say is calling? Mr. Van Lucker from London. Is Sir John expecting it? No, but I'm sure he'll see me. Very good, sir. Come this way. I come here for the money you owe me already, and you ask me for another thousand pounds? What kind of a fool do you think I am? Shh, Van Lucker, please. My daughter will hear you. Oh, my daughter. My business is to lend money and to foreclose when people can't pay up. I cannot support your impoverished estate indefinitely. My dear Van Lucker, you can't be serious. Come now, sit down. Let's talk this matter over quietly. Talk this matter over quietly. There's always talk and talk and talk. With me, money talks. doing here again. Sir John don't know it, but he's a double-dyed scoundrel he is. Careful, Beatrice. Miss Anne's in her studio. She'll hear you. I know, I know, Dr. Jennings. But if he makes me that furious, mark my words, no good will come of it. 
Anne, I want to talk to you. How soon are you going to finish? I've almost finished. I've done this room over seven times since Frank went away. Now I'm satisfied. He'll love it. Franklin Blake. You know, you'll never be happy married to him. Oh, don't be silly. Anne, you know I love you. I always will. And oh, Bedridge, be careful. You smudge my pool barging in like that. Oh, yeah. I don't think much of it anyhow. Oh, Mr. Godfrey, I never thought that I'd bring up a child with no more sense than to go messing about with paintbrushes and things. <laughs> you old dolly. Bedridge never will grow up to appreciate our modern art. Art? Art, you call it? Ah, oh, it gives me the willy. <laughs> Be careful now. Heavens, it's getting late. I've got to put these in Frank's room. So, uh, do you mind crawling back into your book, you handsome worm? A worm? Not a very elevating comparison. Don't be an idiot. You're my cousin, aren't you? And a very noble one, too. <laughs> This moonstone is a very valuable gem. It should enable you to meet your debts. But it belongs to my daughter. Oh, very well. You should be glad to take it off her hands. In payment for the 5,000 you owe me, and let's say, uh, for 3,000 more. Yeah, but do you assume that I would bargain with my daughter's property? Don't be absurd. before Mr. Frank's train gets in. Has uh, Henry left for the station, Rosanna? Yes, it's some time ago. Won't it be good to see Mr. Franklin again? After a whole year. Yeah, of course it will. Is it really true, Miss, that he's bringing the famous Moonstone? Why, yes. I'll be the envy of every girl in England. It's terribly valuable, isn't it? Mr. Frank writes it's worth at least 30,000 pounds. Just a thousand pounds. Isn't that wonderful? Just a thousand pounds. I give you 48 hours to pay up or out you go. But then, look, that's final. Yeah, but you've given me no reasonable warning, no notice. Uh, Sorry. I didn't know you had a visitor. It's all right, my dear. <laughs> come in, come in. Um, I want to introduce an old friend of mine, uh, Mr. Van Locker, uh, my daughter, Anne. How do you do? This is a pleasure. Had I known you have such a delightful surprise down here, Sir John, I would have called sooner at my doctor's. <laughs> there you are, Father. I told you you should allow me a trip to London at least twice a year, just to show me off. I agree, absolutely. <laughs> there you go again, uh, bewitching even my uh, my patients into flattery when... Uh... Well, according to you, I have the face of a turnip and the temper of a witch. Oh, <laughs> I know all his answers, Mr. Van Locker. That's his sense. There now, uh, run along, my dear, and tell Betteridge that uh, Mr. Van Locker will be with us for dinner. Oh, my God. Oh, we'll be delighted. Oh, dear, what a storm. Frank will have a terrible time getting from the station. Yeah. I'll see you at dinner. I may tell you, Van Locker, that uh, my daughter knows Quite. nothing. What a night for a man to be on the road to the valley of a gem. And isn't this 
this uh, Van Lacker, the notorious moneylender who figured in the theft of the Wallingford pearls two years ago? Possibly. But you know Father. <laughs> he's a darling. But if there's any trouble around within a thousand miles, he's sure to make friends with it. <laughs> Hello, Oh, the better for seeing you, sir. And you, Rosanne, how are you? Fine, thank you, sir. Lord. Frank! Say, you must be took to the skin. Oh, no, I'm Frank. all right. Anne! Oh! Oh, darling. <laughs> oh, it's so good to have you back. It's been a century, hasn't it? Two centuries. Three centuries. A dozen centuries. <laughs> Hello, Godfrey. How are you? Splendid, thanks. Oh, well, uh, Godfrey's down for a holiday. Oh? He came down from London yesterday. Mr. Would Mrs. Betteridge be kind enough to direct me to my master's room? Henry, Mr. Franklin will occupy the same room. You're nervous, darling. You're not ill, are you? Oh, it's nothing. I'm just worn out trying to sleep with one eye on this thing. There. Godfrey! Godfrey, look! I had it mounted for you in Bombay. Oh, it's the most exquisite thing I've ever seen. Good Lord, it's as big as an egg. Look, Godfrey. It changes color with a reflection of the light. Yes, it's called the Moonstone. You see, the luster grows and lessens with the waxing and waning of the moon, when there is a moon. Oh, it's beautiful. I'll never let it out of my sight. Oh, but Anne, dear, you must have it put away in a bank vault at once. It's crazy to keep a thing like that lying around the house, a target for thieves. Oh, but darling, you're not serious. Oh, yes, I am. Aren't you being a little melodramatic, old man? Oh, you think so? Oh, Frank, you're imagining things. You're tired. Worn out. I'll have to have Father look you over. Come along. Oh, no, Anne, I'm all Oh, right. I want you all to myself. I have a surprise for you. You'll excuse us, Godfrey? Young man, you're about to gaze upon a sight that will come. Get Paris or Daventry. They have such splendid programs. I'll try, but the storm might interfere. What, well, son? The stone is so beautiful. It almost hypnotizes me. It is beautiful, isn't it? Me, I? Certainly. The coloring is magnificent. I've never seen such perfection in any stone. Frank said it's perfect. There you are, my dear. Thanks, Godfrey. Oh, what a night to go back to London. Oh, but you can't think of leaving in this storm. We'll be only too delighted to put you up. Oh, if it's not too much of an imposition. Oh, nonsense. Rosanna, we'll put Mr. Van Lucker in the room adjoining Mr. Godfrey's. Yes, miss. I tell you, young nerves are out of all. But you want a ton, a good ton. <laughs> <laughs> They're at it again. Frank loves to see the father. What you need is sleep. Plenty of sound sleep. And in your condition of nervous strain, nothing but medicine will help you to it. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. But a glass of ordinary hot milk and a good bed will turn the trick for me. Eh, hey, what, what? Confound your impudence. Do you doubt my professional judgment? Oh, stop it, you old fuss budget. Hmm? Frank's only teasing. Of course I am. Where's your sense of humor, Sir John? Eh, hey, what, what? <laughs> <laughs> I see what it is. It's that cursed moonstone. First it gets on this young turnip's nerves because he had to get it in his pocket, and now it gets on. Oh, off. Father, that's absurd. You're all worked up over the silly superstition that misfortune dogs the footsteps of anyone possessing the moonstone. Mm. <laughs> Why, it's ridiculous. Hey, well, well. Come on, sit down. Oh. Oh, my child. 
among us. What sort of business is this in my house? Oh, Father, please. Lights don't go out for the sake of going out. And I got my suspicions. You old darling. You've been reading mystery novels again. Oh, she's an old idiot who got us into a mix-up like this. Get out, get out, get out. I've half a mind to... Get, give me my notice. Well, after saying it for 40 years, I've a good mind to accommodate you. And the sooner the better, the sooner the better. Oh, no, 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 you, you can't mean that. You can't now mean... Now will you be good? Oh, she's an impotent old wretch, but she knows I can't do without her, confound it. And you know you love it. Hmm. You see? Even better is... Sir John, ma'am, my wife, she's ready. She is in great pain. Sir John can't go out on a night like this. I'll send Dr. Jennings. But Sir John promised my wife. So I did, Sutter, so I did. And not for the world, but I did anyone else have the honor of introducing our next blacksmith to prison. But, Father, you can't go out in this store. No, what did you come? I come in the baker's cart. That's very good. Wait. It'll be the death of you. I guess it, Dr. Jennings knows just as much about helping the stork as you do. Shut up. Ezra. Uh, Father, you already have a cold. You really have to go, Sir John. Ah, uh, uh, send me Rosanna. Come along. Uh, can't I go, Sir John? I'm no, sure. no, no. Get my bag ready. Uh, better Mark my words, if you go out, send me Rosanna. Might as well. Lovely. It should be forbidden by Act of Parliament for babies to arrive on a night like this. Oh, stop fretting, Betty. Father promised he wouldn't venture back until the storm cleared. All the same, he'd have a fit if he knew you were sleeping with that thing under your pillow, instead of burying it down in the cellar or something. Oh, don't be silly. You speak as if this were a hotel or a railway station full of thieves. <laughs> it might well be, for all my suspicions. Be careful of the paint, Betteridge. It's still wet.
my pet this glorious morning. My, it's a treat to see the sunshine. What's the matter, Beauty? The moonstone. It's gone. Yes. It's gone. Do you mean it's been stolen? Someone took it right from under it. I don't know. Oh, dear, it, it, what did it? You, you look as if you'd seen a ghost. Are you sure it's been stolen? I don't know. Mr. Franklin! The gun! Mr. Franklin! Mr. Godfrey! Mr. Franklin! What is it? Oh, what's happened? Is the house of fire? Someone's robbed, Miss Anne. They've stolen the moonstone right from under our heads. What? Well, that's impossible. Oh, is it? Sir John! Sir John! Sir John! And don't look at me like that. Tell me what happened. I don't know. Miss Abbott! Dr. Jennings, quick. Oh, Ezra. Ezra, he isn't dead. Steady, darling, steady. No, he's alive. A pneumonia, I think. Uh, uh, Franklin, uh, give me a hand. He evidently tried to help himself and then collapsed. Oh, my darling. Look at his clothes, they're soaked. Hot water, Bethridge, and turn the switch on the sterilizer. I can't. The electric current's off. Then boil some. Hurry. And, and, and clear the room, please. Uh, clear the room. <laughs> Anne, darling. Oh, get out. All of you, get out. Anne. Oh, can't you understand plain English? Dr. Jennings, then clear the room. Well, don't stand there like a stuffed owl. We've got to do something to recover that confounded moonstone. Yes, I know. Scotland Yard. I'll try and get Inspector Cuff. He's a friend of mine. Hello. Hello. The mine's dead. The storm must have blown the wires down. Hello. No use. I wish I could get cuff. Mr. Mr. Franklin. There's a man downstairs from Scotland Yard. He says it's Inspector Cuff. Cuff. Come along, Godfrey. Oh, good gracious me. It's like bringing rabbits out of a hat. There's nothing to do now but, but wait for the crisis. Oh, I can't leave him. Oh, oh but you must, my dear. Uh, otherwise, I'll have you on my hands, too. <laughs> I, I'll call you the, the moment there's any change. Say the smear was not there last night when you left your mistress and that the paint was wet? Yes. Mr. Blake, you found all doors and windows securely locked from the inside? Yes, Godfrey and I checked them personally, Inspector. Then I must ask everyone here to submit to an examination of their personal belongings. Would you mean you think you'll find paint on some garment worn by the thief? Precisely. Sir, 
Do you mean to hint? Oh, we're not hinting anything, Betteridge. We're merely facing facts. The Moonstone's been stolen. We've got to find it. I start with my things, Inspector. Mine too, Inspector. Miss Anne, you are a police officer? Oh, Anne, this is Inspector Cuff from Scotland Yard, Miss Verinder. The inspector's a friend of mine. We appreciate your assistance, Inspector, but I will not permit an inspection of my personal belongings. Anne, as you say, of course, Miss Verinder, but I'd like to ask one question. Do you happen to know anything about this smell of paint on the door? Might you have done it by accident yourself? I know nothing about that. And Dolly. I want to talk with everyone in the house, individually. I'll begin with you. Yes. In here, sir? No. Down in the drawing room. The last time I saw you, Rosanna Spearman, you were in prison for theft. Yes, sir. But that was... And the pearls you stole at that time were found afterwards in the possession of Carl Van Lucker, a moneylender, were they not? Yes, but... You're very grateful to your benefactress, Miss Verinder, aren't you? Yes, of course. Even to assisting her in anything she might ask? Yes, well... That would depend. Has Van Lucker, since coming here, acknowledged that he knows you? No. No, sir. You know what it means to be an accessory to crime? Even though it were proved you were actuated by gratitude. Yes. Oh, yes. It isn't very pleasant in prison, is it? No. No. You know that the yellow diamond called the Moonstone was originally stolen from a sacred idol in an Indian temple. I've heard that many times. Isn't it a fact, Yandu, that every native of the faith has dedicated himself to restoring the sacred gem to the temple? That has been the tradition for many generations. But it doesn't touch me, sir. Why not? Because... I have adopted the Christian faith. But when you entered Mr. Blake's service, you knew he was taking the Moonstone from India, didn't you? Yes, I did. That'll be all. Thank you, sir. Mr. Blake tells me you're a dealer in rare books. That is correct. Rather a losing business these days, isn't it? Yes, when one refers to it as a business. Fortunately, my private income is sufficient to dub it a hobby. During depression. Oh, you have a private income. But surely it must have diminished considerably with those terrific losses you've been suffering lately by gambling. What? Yes. Well, that's my private affair which can't possibly have any bearing on this situation. No, 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 of course not. But if you were better fixed financially, you'd feel more at liberty to urge Miss Verinder to marry you. Well, I hadn't looked at it in that light. But it's an idea. Now, he owes me 5,000 pounds, and I came here to collect or for clothes. On account of that storm last night, I happen to be under this roof and a moonstone disappeared. Now, I suppose now you want to ask a lot of crazy questions about it. Go ahead. I am a good listener. Yeah. Have a cigar. Thank you. Just two questions, Lucker. Only two? Well, let me off easy, huh? Do you happen to know if Miss Verinder is aware of her father's business with you? No. I don't think so. The old fool said she isn't. Why didn't you acknowledge that you knew Rosanna Spearman, the housemaid, when you entered this house? Why should I do anything to make it hard for that poor little kid who wants to go straight? I never knew you to be brimming over with the milk of human kindness, Van Lucker. I imagine there are a lot of things you don't know about me. Is that all? That's all for now. Thanks. You're welcome.
Sir John was called out last night. Uh, yes. What time do you think he returned? Oh, I, I should say between midnight and, uh, and two o'clock. Your real name isn't Jennings. It's Crofton, isn't it? How did you discover that? There. Yeah, it's my business to remember faces. And you were a pretty big man in your profession 20 years ago. I guess that you, as you probably know, there was a, a great tragedy in my life. It was only with Sir John's help that I, I was able to overcome it. You're assisting him with your knowledge of drugs and the compounding of his new anesthetic, aren't you? Uh, yes. You know that Sir John is in financial difficulty and that the value of the Moonstone might help to put him back on his feet. I'm not familiar with the doctor's private affairs. Now, perhaps if you... if you'll excuse me, Inspector, I'd... I'd better get back to Sir John. Naturally, your patient comes first, Doctor. <laughs> but I'll expect to resume this talk later. Yes. Now, Mrs. Beatrice, are you sure you had no occasion to enter Miss Bender's studio this morning before you discovered her there, beside the bed? No. You didn't go in there, say, to dust or wipe things off? No. Well, do you know anything about Sir John's financial affair? No. And you can't make me answer any more questions, you nosy old owl. Now, for a pretty woman, Mrs. Oh, Beatrice, you I... can't get round me with your soft soap. I'll have you know I've been in service in this house for 40 years. I know my young mistress. And if a hundred moonstones was lost, stone and lost trained, I know how and when to keep my mouth shut. Same as she. I'm cool. I'm cool. What is it, Doctor? Shh. He's delirious. He's been muttering things I think you should hear. <laughs> Another little blacksmith. <laughs> oh, that young ass, Franklin. Uh, what he wants is sleep. Sleep. <laughs> hot milk. <laughs> I'll give him hot milk. <laughs> Rosanna. <sighs> Ginger it up with some RTH. That will send me another little sweet. I eyes. Rosanna! What's on the edge? What is this RTH? It's a powerful drug to induce sleep and calm the nerves, yes? On the other hand, a slight overdose might produce a strange stimulating reaction. Last night, I saw Rosanna take Franklin a glass of hot milk. Now, it's quite possible that such a... Dad, I see what you mean. Mm. Get Mr. Blake and Miss Bernard. Hurry. Uh, 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 wait, better. It's wait, better. Uh, I have a plan, but it involves a scientific problem, which I will explain to you later. Uh, tell Miss Anne to come here as soon as she can, without letting Mr. Franklin be aware of it. Miss Bernard can be of great use to us, as I will explain to you later if you agree with my idea. And every sensory impression which has once been recognized by the perceptive consciousness is registered, a photograph, so to speak, on the brain, and may be reproduced at some subsequent time. Although there may be no consciousness of its existence in the mind during the intermediate period. Do you mean to say that if we gave Blake another dose of this, enough to produce the stimulating reaction, that he'd repeat what he did last night? That he'd do everything he's totally unaware of now? Would he take a substitute for the Moonstone and do exactly with it what he did with the real one last night? Uh, there's no telling. It, it, it's just an experiment. What do you think, Inspector? I'd say try it. Certainly. By all means. Oh, Dr. Mark my words, you're going to make a fool of somebody. Unlike us not to chip tell. Oh, quiet, Beatrice. I, I, I can't guarantee to produce identical reactions because I don't know exactly how much of this Sir John gave him. There's no danger, Doctor. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's only dangerous if it becomes a habit. <sighs> Sounds to me like DT's. Oh, Beatrice. 
How are we going to give it to him without his knowledge? Well, that's simple. That rich will conveniently remember his hot milk. Heaven's knows he'll need it after a day like this. Come on, darling. Oh, oh it's just ridiculous. I never heard of such a thing in all my life. And while you're about it, Doctor, could you give a good stiff uh, sleeping potion to Mrs. Bethridge? <laughs> This will make a perfect substitute for the moonstone. Well, all we need now is last night's storm to complete this crazy play acting. If you don't behave yourself, I'll send you to your room. All the same if he does walk. I bet my Sunday bonnet to go straight to... Where? Well, where would a man be going in the middle of the night? Mrs. Betteridge! You ought to be ashamed of yourself. We were trying to find the moonstone and help Frank out of his dilemma. Well, nobody ever found anything in their sleep. Except a nightmare. Bad business. Bad business. going to happen anyway. Quick, get behind the curtain. All Come right, on, right all right. Be quiet. What a stupid thing to do. Never lead us to the moonstone. Maybe he'll snap his door. But I'll keep him awake. Ezra, he's... Not you! Godfrey, take this wretched thing. Hide it. 
Nice and full of fees. He's gone to sleep. God! Godfrey and Van Lucker. My God, I knew it all the time. You did? And you let them thieves get away? <laughs> my, my, my. <laughs> Aren't you the little Sherlock? Mrs. Bedridge, go down to the river and pull the water over your head. Being the perfect lady, I'll give you the last word. Your reservations for Holland, sir, according to your telegram. Did you wire Amsterdam? Yes, sir. De Groot phoned half an hour ago to say that he could cut the stone immediately. Have you got it, sir? No. Got the able by his finger. His train was due half an hour ago. He ought to be here any moment. Speaking of the devil, let him in. Hold your horses. Why, oh, Inspector Cup? You made good time from Yorkshire, didn't you, Van Luck? Oh, Holland, eh? Here, wait a minute. Robin. Let Mr. Godfrey Abelwhite in. Please take your hands off me. Hmm. Fifteen thousand pounds. Well, just about enough to put you securely on your feet again, Mr. Abelwhite. It would have been. It hadn't been for Mr. Van Lucker. Oh, listen here, I don't know anything about... Shut up. Come on. Let me have it. Well, there go my matrimonial prospect. Priceless. Magnificent. You gentlemen are not trying to sell this to me by any chance, are you? All right, Robbins. Take him away. Yes, Mrs. Bedridge. Those were the days. Remember? <laughs> 